Welcome to Bitcoin Mining News for Friday, July 28th, 2023. As you can tell, the banner is no longer on the bottom of the screen. That's because Mining Disrupt 2023 has wrapped by the time you're watching this. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. I want to highlight what the Mining Disrupt conference looked like. So for those of you that were unable to attend or for those of you that want to reminisce what it was like to be there, you can do that as I read the news. Let's start with the numbers. Well, it seems like Time Chain Calendar got a bit of an update here. It looks noticeably different from the last time I was here. But the exchange rate right now is 29,383 USD for a single Bitcoin. And if you'd like to trade sats for dollars, then you can get 3,403 sats per dollar as of this recording. And right now, the block time is coming in at a rather slow average of 11 minutes and 36 seconds. Currently, the fees for a priority is 14 sats per V-byte with an anytime fee of 8 sats per V-byte. Currently, we've got 270 odd thousand unconfirmed transactions in the mempool waiting to get confirmed. And that means it is a depth of 105 blocks. And to close the numbers out, the average hash rate for the last 14 days is sitting at a solid 376.5. What I'm going to be playing here off on the side is some scenes provided to us by the Hobbyist Miner channel. So you can see what the mining conference, the Mining Disrupt conference, looked like while it was going on just here a couple days ago. The story from Coindesk here is Bitcoin mining computing power may drop as much as 30% after having experts. Machine, efficiency, and low cost of power are key to surviving the Bitcoin halving, industry figures tell Coindesk. Computing power on the Bitcoin network, known as hash rate, could drop by as much as 30% as unprofitable miners shut off their rigs after the next halving event, expected in April 2024. Experts said in a Twitter Spaces on Wednesday, hosted by Coindesk, as part of its Mining Week 2023. As the rewards get cut in half, the cost to mine a block successfully doubles, bearing major upward swings in Bitcoin's price. This would lead to miners that are not profitable to shut off their machines and, in turn, lower hash rates for the network. To this end, miners have been trying to upgrade their fleets to newer generation machines, which require less power to mine a block successfully. Power costs are usually miners' biggest operational expenditure, so minimizing this cost is the key to surviving the halving. We're going to be talking a lot about the Bitcoin halving as we approach April of 2024. The reason the Bitcoin news will start to reach a crescendo around April of next year and leading up to that point is because people will start to remember, they'll be reminded, it'll be talked about that the amount of Bitcoin that is coming in every day, 900 Bitcoin coming in every day onto exchanges will be cut in half. Imagine for a moment that if what happened to Bitcoin at each halving happened with our total food supply around the whole world. I know it's not a perfect analogy, but you get the idea why that supply shock has such an impact on the price. This next background video I'll be playing is from DJ Mines, so if you want to check out more of this video, jump over to his channel. This story is from Crypto Slate. It is titled, Texas Heatwave Triggers Downward Spiral in Bitcoin Mining Operations. Quick Take Bitcoin difficulty has seen a downward adjustment of 3% today. Remarkably, this marks the ninth negative adjustment in difficulty over the last year. Impacts of Texas heat wave on hash rate. The recent negative trend in difficulty adjustments can be partly attributed to the intense summer heat wave experienced in Texas. This weather phenomenon has significantly affected the operations of local Bitcoin miners, leading to a noteworthy decline in hash rate over the past couple of months. Hash rate decline. Specifically, the hash rate has declined by more than 5% in both June and July. These declines coincide with the timing of four out of the nine negative adjustments in Bitcoin's difficulty level this year, strongly suggesting the heat wave's adverse impact on Bitcoin mining operations. This is a point that people that understand the energy, the mining side of Bitcoin, talk about all of the time. They will be asked endlessly by the Bitcoin podcast host why more people don't understand this. What else we can do to educate people about the energy side of this? Why it's so important that Bitcoin mining on and on and on about energy. Let me try and make it as simple as possible. Bitcoin mining requires energy. The cheaper the energy you can find 
the more profitable you are. If you can find the exact same resource for half the price of your competitors, then you're going to make twice as much money. It's basic, simple economics. This is why Bitcoin miners are continually looking for the cheapest energy that they can find. The cheaper the energy, the higher their revenue. It's really simple. What this does for local communities is it brings a community into existence that might not otherwise be there. Imagine a waterfall or a river in some relatively remote location that nobody is living at because, well, there's no infrastructure there. It's kind of a chicken and an egg kind of problem. Why do people want to live in a city when there's no city there? And who's going to go and build up a bunch of infrastructure for a city if there's no people there? Uh, you kind of need the one or the other. This is where Bitcoin miners come in. They go, hmm, there's a river over there. It's a raging river. We could put some turbines. We could put some things near the waterfall. We could dam the river. We, we, could, we can harness that energy and we can start mining it for a really low cost because we would be the only people out there. We would have no competition. There'd be no homes. There'd be no hospitals. There'd be no grocery stores. Nobody else would be buying that energy. We could get the energy. We, we could set the price on that energy or the energy developer, whoever was there. We could get it for whatever they set it at. And since we're the only ones there, we'll, we'll pay them pennies on it. And then the people might start showing up. Oh, there's energy over there and it's really, really cheap. Hmm. Maybe I'll build my factory over there. And a bunch of workers go, wait a second, there's a factory over there. Maybe I'd like to get a job over there. And there's energy there and it's really cheap. Maybe I'll build a home over there. And this could happen anywhere on the entire planet where energy can either be found or harnessed. The next background video I'll be playing is from The Mining King. If you want to watch more of his content, by all means, check him out. And the story I'll be reading is titled, Tesla Keeps Bitcoin Holdings Steady at 184 million for four straight quarters. For the fourth consecutive quarter, Tesla retains its $184 million Bitcoin holdings without making new purchases or selling, despite outperforming market expectations. In other news, Tesla's financial performance this year has outstripped many analysts' predictions. The company's adjusted earnings per share were reported at 90 cents, surpassing the expected earnings by nine cents. Likewise, Tesla's Q2 revenue of 24.9 billion outdid anticipated figures of 0.8 percent. Dennis Porter was just at Mining Disrupt and here how something cannabis something back there it says live. Dennis Porter at Mining Disrupt suggests that Bitcoin miners follow the cannabis industry's approach advocating for wider acceptance at a state by state level. The biggest reason from what I understand that states allowed legal use of cannabis is because of the tax revenue that they could generate from that. They saw, oh, there's this whole industry, much like alcohol, and we can tax it at kind of whatever rate we want, whatever people agree to pay, and we can use that for any number of things. They could sell that any way they want, but the point is there was a lot of money to be made. But I would argue that there are orders of magnitude more money to be made in the Bitcoin mining space and Bitcoin as a whole ecosystem than there is with cannabis. Think about the things that use energy. Well, that's basically everything. What doesn't use energy? If you're a business and Bitcoin mining is in your state and it's helping reduce the cost of energy, then you can move along. You could move your entire factory from this place to the other place. Have you traveled around the US at all recently? Have you seen how many empty Kmarts and how many empty Sears and how many empty malls there are? I wasn't able to make it to the Mining Disrupt Conference this year, maybe next year. Anyhow, I hope you learned something new this week and until next time.